and welcome to Ask Me About K-Pop, the essential guide for recent converts and seasoned fans alike. My name is Shannon. And I'm Angelica. And welcome to the show. Sorry that we were off unexpectedly last week. Our Ugh. microphones were being brats. Technical difficulties. <laughs> so sorry. But at least we <laughs> caught it really quick and didn't record an entire lost episode. So oh my God, that would have been a di- <laughs> We got like 10 seconds in before we realized that the mic wasn't working. Thank God. <laughs> We've definitely done that before where we've gotten like an hour in and I realized like my microphone's been off this whole time. (laughs) But anyway, we are back with an important traditional Ask Me About K-Pop episode. It's time to look 20 years back uh, at K-Pop in the year 2003. And I saw some people wondering like, oh no, I wonder what the lost episode was about. And it's this one. It's this one. We We just put it it be lost. We we did all the work. Like (laughs) we're not going to just not put it out. (laughs) Um, So if you haven't listen to one of these before this is our fourth time exploring an entire year and we do it in chunks Mm -hmm. so that it isn't deeply overwhelming so this will be three hours long (laughs) so this will be about the first six months of 2003 Mm -hmm. and something that i took into consideration in putting this episode together i feel like in the last couple because k-pop itself was still it's still like being established Mm -hmm. in this time and so a lot of the popular music you know is ballad singers Mm -hmm. or is like you know pop not pop punk new metal and like rap music and all of this other stuff but now that we're getting into a time period where like the k-pop is a little more consistent i omitted a lot of like rap songs and rock songs and there's a Mm -hmm. few ballads that like you know, were the number one song of the year or won lots of trophies just for the sake of talking about it. But I'm, I, we need to start editing these down a little bit. (laughs) Well, because as the years go by, the K-pop is going to get, like you said, like it's getting more, um, I can't think of the like word. Like saturating the, the yeah, market like more. The, the, the Hollywood wave is spreading and growing. And so we're getting more K-pop acts and they're growing in popularity. So we can now start to narrow it down and get more into the specific genre this podcast is about. As opposed <laughs> to like the whole year in Korean music. Correct. Now we can get more specific because our genre is becoming a larger player in the music scene for sure Mm -hmm. and something that i found very interesting about at least this six months of 2003 is that like i feel like in this moment k-pop was in a weird place Mm. because all of our first gen popular groups are no more Mm. like hot is long gone sex geese is long gone ses ended the year before this finkel is done uh shinwa is over baby vox baby vox is still hanging in but But like like, this is the last year so like the groups are kind of like there's no huge groups in yeah. play right now because like the major players and the major like fandoms now do not have a hold in the yeah in the industry. it's like kind of just God at mm. this point yeah 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 and, and Boa. yeah and and solo artists mm-hmm. is like what there is more of in this year is like popular solo artists and I found when researching this that a lot of these groups we'll talk about today that debuted are remembered as like one hit wonders Mm. like this is not a year where the k-pop like stuck yeah and so far like i I think on this list there's no songs that you're like oh my god yes this classic song that lasted forever Mm -hmm. except there's one there's one song on here that i remember listening to and being like oh a i already knew this song and b like this is still regarded as like a classic song but even that song is not really k-pop like Mm. the group is not really thought of as a k-pop group so yeah the k-pop just doesn't it wasn't sparkling it wasn't sparkling it it didn't have it yet and that's okay it is okay um but yeah i'm very excited to get into this because um this year more than any of the others i feel like is um evoking a lot of nostalgia in me Mm. because especially the way that everybody's dressed in this year is like these are the clothes i wore to high school in Mm, 2003 like it just feels very like yeah i know this (laughs) i remember this 
Um, so yeah, let's get into it. We're just going to go through, uh, chronologically through the year mm -hmm. and talk about debuts and comebacks and news items and whatever pops yeah, any, up. Any like major fun facts that are worth noting for the year. And apologies in advance, as always, if I somehow missed something because that happens. Listen, we are just, <laughs> we are but two tiny humans. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing our best. Yes. <laughs> All right. This was 20 years ago, okay? The it internet was. archive is not what it was. That is very true. These, <laughs> well, it's not what it is. <laughs> these episodes are very fun, too, but also quite a challenge to research. I like them because I get to go into detective mode. But also, yeah, the internet was not what it was. So mm -hmm. things are different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So we will start off on January 10th with a debut of a group called Five, but it was spelled capital F dash IV. Their single is called Girl. Tell me why. So this was a four-member boy group, and their name was supposed to mean fans plus the Roman numeral IV for the four members. That is so <laughs> fine. That fans is like four, one, of my, one of my <laughs> biggest pet peeves about K-pop is when the band has a number that doesn't correspond to the group. Name. And they always have to say it's because the fans are the yeah, other yeah, yeah. numbers. Sure, 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 <laughs> sure, whatever, fine. And then they just get like war flashbacks to every time I've ever had to explain why there's only 13 Teen 17s <laughs> like <laughs> but this is just classic boy boy band classic music. boy like, band stuff it's like a barely legal backstreet boys mm -hmm, song like, totally it yeah, has yeah. similar and that like you know sidesteppy choreo in the box room with the baggy pants like it's got all the notes yeah <laughs> the music video for this one is pretty hard to see quality wise because it, it has not been properly re-uploaded at any point but they're wearing like those bleach highlight jeans like mm -hmm. with the like acid in the like little crevices yeah, yeah, yeah. they're like painted <laughs> essentially yeah and they like smash up some mannequins with baseball bats and like dance in a white room yeah but i did find a really nice video of them i found a bunch of these actually from in this episode there was a show called project sugar man mm -hmm. that was based on the premise of a documentary called finding sugar man where someone yeah. was trying to find like a mm -hmm. lost artist yeah we've mentioned project sugar man a couple times because it's come up throughout the histories yeah but uh, the premise was that like UJ suck and the other hosts would like spend each episode trying to find and reunite some kind of band. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of the groups from this episode did project sugar man episodes yeah. and five did one. And it's like really endearing and they're very good singers. And in their forties, like they still had it. Totally. Totally. <laughs> I, I completely agreed with your note in this of like, they're even better than they were when they debuted. And I totally agree. They sound great. Uh, next up, I found a little piece of like rumor news. I put news in quotes because like, <laughs> that's another funny ta thing about these 20 year back episodes is that a lot of the like news because it was the wild west internet and stuff was getting translated across the ocean mm. and there was just like a more tabloidy sense of yeah. news. Like all of it is like unconfirmed and rumors mm -hmm. and like stuff that I feel well, like people can't publish anymore. Totally. And I think also a big part of that is because K-pop was so new that like K-pop news wasn't really like people didn't really talk about K-pop in that way or like that kind of celebrity news didn't make it onto like the nightly news. Like right. we always make a point to be like, and this was talked about on the, the news. The real like, news. It mattered. And that like, especially in 2000, 2003 like no this is all just like back alley whispered yeah. news in quotes but yeah so this piece of news was that eric from shinwa was going to propose to his girlfriend on live television that's quite a rumor right <laughs> like that's a wild like accusation. who would have believed this because the rumor at the time which was never ever confirmed is that eric from shinwa was dating an actress named kim hee sun um, and this was only suspected because he had written something about like happy anniversary to my darling or something in the album notes mm. of one of their albums. And so people were like, he's got to have a girlfriend and it's got to be this actress. And, and I think there was like couple items like, I don't know. Sure. People had tied them together. But there was a report 
that he was going to propose to her on live TV on Valentine's Day. This obviously did not happen. (laughs) But imagine if it did. K-pop would have been so different if like a first gen idol was like absolutely in love on tv on purpose yeah like, yeah, yeah. No and that way. literally didn't happen until like rain like <laughs> decades <laughs> later like that uh, yeah i can't even the alternate universe of k-pop in a world where <laughs> that was where allowed. that's a thing is crazy <laughs> um oh the next thing i have is also a rumor news and this was a breakup rumor mm. uh god yoon kye sang and Finkel Sung Yuri, there was like a very pervasive, never confirmed rumor that they had been dating since 1999. Oh, damn. Uh, and there was a lot of like couple item evidence to this. But anyway, in January 2003, it was like announced through sources that they had broken up. Ooh, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. I love that. <laughs> a never confirmed relationship reported to have ended. <laughs> like, okay. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Uh, Next up on the timeline, we have a comeback from a group called Deli Spice, which is one of my favorite names on this whole (laughs) list. The album was called Espresso, and the single was titled Confession. This sold 42,000 copies and was the number 77 best selling album of the year. And it is kind of like not really K pop, but it's such a pleasant, pleasant song. I had to put it on here because this is one of the songs on the Reply 1997 Mm -hmm. soundtrack. And it was always used at like the saddest romantic moments. And it just like, it makes me want to cry when I hear it. So I was like, (laughs) it's from this year. I have to include it. I love it. A personal favorite (laughs) made it on the list. Next on February 5th, we had a comeback from Click B. This is a boy group that's been in all of our 20 back yep. episodes so far. This album was called Click B04, and the single is Cowboy. <laughs> So this album sold 99,000 copies and was the number four album for February and 27 for the year overall. And they got one music show trophy on Inky Gaio. Nice. And we watched this music video for the random game in our fan song mm. episode, which okay, is episode 196. And it's one of those many videos that is filmed in the Incheon uh, subway terminal mm-hmm. at the airport. <laughs> so many music videos from this because yeah. I feel like we established in the TVXQ episode that like the airport had just opened yeah and so it like so. became like the place yeah because there's a tvxq uh music video there's a shinwa music a video. baby box one um and then this click b one this, that's four that's already four at least. Yeah, yeah yeah that's a lot <laughs> <laughs> on the same day february 5th we had a debut of a solo artist named Gummy. Their album was Like Them, and the single was called If You Come Back. Gummy is a solo artist who was 22 at the time and debuted under YG. This album sold 68,000 copies in 2003 and was the number 44 album of the year. And Gummy is still around. Yes, like she, we saw yeah. her at the Hollywood Bowl once. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like she did a... She she does OSTs. She's like a ballad yes. singer. And I, I don't know if she had one on the Goblin soundtrack or like... She, or Descendants of the Sun. One she of had the, one like, of those like ones. major... Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had like a major OST. Uh, this music video features a boy with like very crispy hair and like his hair <laughs> it's like down and straight in a bowl cut but it has like so much gel in it and it's just like crunchy, really crunchy. <laughs> and he's like walking sadly on a bridge and then gummy is underwater playing piano in like a white suit mm. and i think the implication through watching the whole video is that perhaps gummy is a girl who jumped off of this Ooh. bridge and the boy is walking it and remembering her and being sad is Ooh. the vibe i got the but man. the underwater piano playing part is pretty banana yeah <laughs> but a bummer overall yeah overall <laughs> 
Uh, Next up on February 6th, we have a debut of a group called Big Mama, and their first album was called Like the Bible, and their debut single is called Break Away. Break away. Uh, So Big Mama is a four-member girl group, and their debut concept for the music video and all of the stages was that there were, like, four skinny women standing Mm -hmm. at mic stands pretending to sing, and then it's revealed that Big Mama is actually singing because they were all, like, bigger girls, and, Mm -hmm. like, that was the concept. Yes. We got got this music video in a random game once, and we loved that reveal. We were like, oh, my God, it's a singing in the rain concept. Like, we were totally fooled by the twist, and we kept being like, these girls don't really look like they're singing. (laughs) And then it was like, oh, they're not. That's the point. (laughs) Uh, But this album sold 323,000 copies and was the number six album of the year. Oh, you go, Big Mama. This this Um, album is really good. Like, this song is excellent, and their voices are so smooth. Like, so smooth. Next up on the timeline, February 9th, we have a debut of a group called Bubble Sisters. Their album was also called Bubble Sisters, and the single was called Bubble Song. You are not going to hear a clip from it because this group is terrible. (laughs) This is a four-member girl group that we discussed, I think, in our Faves Are Problematic episode uh, because they have a blackface concept. Yep. That is the concept of the group. Um... And seeing the thumbnails alone is awful. Yeah, so I didn't want them in our playlist. Mm -hmm. I just, like, didn't want to see it. Yes. It's so awful. (laughs) But this album sold 45,000 copies, and people still defend it to this day. So, like, people still bring up Bubble Sisters as though this was a good thing that happened. And therefore, it had to be mentioned. But let it go on the record that this was a terrible thing that happened and should never happen again. This was awful. Agreed. Awful. Period. (laughs) Next up on Valentine's Day, we have a debut of a solo artist called Kim Hyung Joon, and his first album is called Kim Hyung Joon One. There's so many albums on this that are just like the group two, the group four, the group five. (laughs) That's all it is. That's all. They don't need to come up with something fancier. Uh, Whereas now you have like colons and M dashes and semicolons, and it's like the chapter two, New Horizon, (laughs) in the beginning. But Kim Young Joon's debut single is called I Must Have. So Kim Young Joon is the other vocalist of Toy. And in our sketchbook episode, we talked about how Yu Hui Yo was in a duo called Toy yes. that was really popular in the 90s. So this was the first time that the other guy did something came on out own. as a soloist. So this album sold 87,000 copies and was number 17 for February and number 22 for the year. And he got four music camp show wins in a row. Wow. So it was like, you know, triple, what a hat Quadruple trick or whatever crown. they call it. Hat trick is just three. Oh, okay quadruple crown (laughs) um and the music video is actually from a real movie this time because we've talked in these episodes about how a lot of these a a lot of the ballad music videos of this time are mini movies yes they're like mini movies like they film a whole like cinematic Mm storyline and it's like like eight minutes long is this from a drama (laughs) and it's like no it's just the music video but this is a case where it actually is a movie that the clips are from this was a melodramatic romance movie called the classic that came out that year that was really popular and the deli spice song from earlier was also on the soundtrack of this movie so there you go yeah so worth putting it on there your own personal choice come on (laughs) On February 24th, we had a comeback from soloist Kim Ji Hyun. The album was called Second Time, and the single was called The Blues. Kim Ji Hyun was one of the Ru Ra girls. Ru Ra is a co ed group that we've talked about before. Um, and this was her first solo album since 1997. 
Rura member Sangin does the screamed rap intro and all of the ad libs. And you can hear him in that clip singing <laughs> or saying, <laughs> sing, it, sing it. And it's really ridiculous <laughs> and distracting. Um, but the music video is like photography themed. There's a lot of like negatives and like photos mm-hmm. being developed. And I think it's in like black and white or like sepia yeah. or whatever. And it's just this like nice, slow little ballad. But then this fucking screaming rap guy that just like, shouts at you i really think it like ruins ruins the the song song. it's It's so much and it's really dumb to watch her perform because she like sings the whole song just standing there she doesn't do any choreo and she like wears something pretty and like does her hair all up and then she has these like cheesy ass male dancers with like canes like and little half and like phantom of the opera masks yeah they're like jazz squaring like in front of her and then you have this guy in all white just being like oh oh and you're like what is happening like this is so weird i don't like it i I also found it particularly (laughs) weird because the guy screaming is the rura from knowing brothers who like to me has such like dorky dad energy yeah. that it's like very strange to see him being like, oh, I'm cool. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> get it, get it. And you're like, oh, no, sit down. <laughs> Who is this heckler? <laughs> Wandered onto the stage. Security. <laughs> yes, for sure. All right. Next up, on February 27th, we had a comeback from ballad artist Kim Gonmo. And this album is called He Story history but with an e uh and the single is called wedding invitation so the reason i put this on the list is because this was the best-selling album of the year Mm -hmm. but it sold 529,000 copies which is a lot but again Compared to previous years that we've done this, usually the number one album sold like two million copies. Mm. So like I don't know, it just felt like a weird year of music. People like that weren't nothing really paying was really attention yeah, in the same way. Interesting. Um, but the music video for this is just a long shot of like an empty like desert with a single tree and a car drives up and a bride and groom get out and get in a fight on the side of the road and the bride runs away to cry in the dirt and then the husband drags her back to the car and they drive away it's it's (laughs) it's such a weird music like the majority of the music video is just this woman sobbing in black Uh and white and the camera just like zooms in and out on her crying face and it's such a bummer but the entire time that i was watching it i was like I think this is where Chen filmed that music video because it's the same tree, but then he put a piano in front of it and like had all of his creepy lady veil dancers. And I was like, this is that tree. It's that vibe. (laughs) I think it's the same. I I would not be surprised. It's the same tree. (laughs) (laughs) Next up on the same day, February 27th, we had a comeback from soloist Park Ji Yoon. The album was called Woo! Twenty-one, and the single was called Can You. This album sold 105,000 copies and was number seven for February and number 26 for the year overall. There was a second single from this album called DJ that won her a music trophy on Inky Gayo. Um, but we've talked about Park Ji Yoon before. She was a soloist under JYP. Mm-hmm. Um, she had dating rumors with Kangta. We talked about yes. that like yeah, yeah, last yeah. time, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is a super, super fun song and a super fun music video. I think we've kind of like knocked Park Ji Yoon before because her solo her like debut she was not a very good singer. I don't love her voice. I just yeah. don't. Her voice is very like <laughs> small and like <laughs> it just goes and then, flat like, really easily and I don't love it. Yeah. <laughs> but the music video is hilarious. It's super colorful and she has like enormous hair that has been like crimped, crimped and, and teased, teased as big as possible. And then like pinned under so that it's like perfectly round. Um, and basically like she's wearing like this tiny pink top and these 
these like sexy little pink pleather pants and all these like nerdy men are like stalking her and so she finally like lets one into her house and like sings this song at him which the whole lyrics are like can you impress me can you please me like you really think you can handle a woman like me mm-hmm. <laughs> and then she goes around her house and she shows this nerdy dude all the other nerdy guys that are that just are, like, hiding hiding in, in her, her closet and behind the cow- <laughs> uh, couch and like in the curtains and she's like none of these men can please me and you think you can like get out of here and i i really liked i loved one. how like quirky and cheeky and fun and that it like had really interesting styling and mm-hmm. it was just like a nice change of like yes. hey this is something and it also felt like the aesthetics of the music video felt more like the k-pop that we are right. familiar with for sure and i liked it yeah um next up on the same day we had a comeback from NRG uh and the album was called Hit Song and the single is also called Hit Song So Energy is a four-member boy group that debuted in 97, and as discussed in the 2000 episode, one of their members suddenly died Mm. from an illness in 2000. Uh, But this was their fifth full album. It sold 142,000 copies. It was 17 for the year, and they got three music show trophies for Hit Song. And the music video is just like a wacky party video with like lots of girls and like clubby mall clothes. Mm-hmm. And then there's like a goofy short guy in like a mushroom wig and like a handbook. And like he's trying to hit on the girls, and they're all just yeah. like, get out of here, nerd. And he like trips and falls into their cleavage and like whatever. Right. He's like real goofy. <laughs> um, and there is like a dance break where they're like all dancing in a black room and it's pretty groovy they like do a really fun little like it's like very simple choreo that you could probably like easily learn yeah and this is probably not a very nice observation (laughs) but i was watching the video and looking at these guys and i was like how old were they then and they were supposedly only 25 but they look much older than that (laughs) i don't know if it's just the haircuts or the styling or something little (laughs) glasses or i don't know but yeah they do have older energy for sure and this song just personally reminds me of now by Mm. finkel like i know you miss me i'm crazy oh yeah it like just has has like a a similar similar kind of or something but that song reminds me of an nsync song that i like can't put my finger on as well yeah 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 On March 1st, we had a debut of a group called West. The album was called The Birth of a New Club, and the single was called Rira, parentheses, I Will. West was a three-member co-ed group, and this 15-track album was the only one they ever released. Um, So it was pretty hard to find out any other information, probably due to bad SEO for the name West. West. It's like when that group Cool, right? I'm supposed to Google Cool (laughs) K-pop? Like, come on, that's not going to help me. Um, But this is another classic Incheon Airport train terminal music video. Okay, so there's another one for our list. (laughs) There's five right there. Um, Two on the same list in the same year, which is great. Um, And yeah, this song is very fun. Like, I love the, there's like kind of a Latin instrumentation Mm -hmm. to it. And it's like, it has a really nice beat. And Um, that kind of like classic trot vocals yeah, like, like melody <laughs> yeah yeah it's great it gets stuck in my head for sure um and my one note i feel like i have to find it so that i can see why i wrote this but i wrote that new jeans wishes they had this girl's stage outfits <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay, so she has, like, a cropped jacket and these, like, half satin, like, low-rise big chonky belt pants and she has like two weird little hair clips in her like blunt bang haircut Mm -hmm. and like i don't know i feel like this is the look that everybody like wants right now totally 100 (laughs) percent. except that if new jeans was wearing that each of those pant legs would be three times as big oh yeah that's true (laughs) that's true (laughs) all right next up very important on march 1st we have a debut of seven 
And Seven is a solo artist, and it is spelled S-E numeral seven E-N. His debut album was called Just Listen, dot, dot, dot. And the single is called Come Back to Me. Okay, so Seven, his real name is Che Dong Wook. He was 19 at the time and debuted under YG. This album sold 212,000 copies, was number four for March and 10 for the entire year. Wow, popular. It is a 14-track album that has guest features from Gummy and Wee Sung and also Baby G Dragon, Adorable. who had not debuted yet but was still doing. I think YG in 2002 stuff. there was also yeah, yeah like Baby G Dragon, where he had thing. his like spray painted like yes. shoes or whatever, and he was literally a child. <laughs> but this music video has Seven being like a carefree punk, buying a lot of stuff at the mall. He has like long, flippy ginger hair and like a beanie, and he has heelys on, and is like, oh my god, he just like heelys. <laughs> <laughs> all over the mall and I like can't take Healy seriously because when I was a teacher like I would have kids who had Healy's and like one I had to take like a kid's wheels away once like you know what I mean yeah. I just like think of Healy's and I think of like trouble making kids like we healing down the hall or whatever and then so it just always makes me laugh but it seems like he's like prepping like he's going to the mall to prep for this date right and the date like never happens or she yeah. stands him up because then he goes mental yes. and like destroys everything in the room and has like a full breakdown yeah he like sets up the whole beautiful meal and you see the girl and she's like yay i love it and then she like di fade disappears like yeah. she didn't she wasn't there mm -hmm. she's gone so he like loses it yeah. um he also wore the heelys on the music show yes. stages yes which is did. also very funny because this song is like a very slow like step touch song and he's like slowly oh healing around the it's best, so funny the best part <laughs> is when like he'll be like at the front and then he like does like a no he's like come back to me <laughs> and then he like pushes back and he just like dramatically like healies backwards <laughs> and the backup dancers like part for him to like go into the back it's so funny it's so funny it's so funny it's so funny but <laughs> Seven was very, very popular, and this was his debut moment. And he also made a part two. There's a comeback to me part two that was released in 2006. Ooh. So he kept this train rolling, I Love guess. It. Next up on March 14th, we had a comeback from As One. The album was called Never Too Far, and the single was called Mr. Agile. <laughs> As One was a duo that debuted in 1999. Both of the girls in the group are from LA and they met singing together at church, which is very sweet. Um, and yeah, this is just like perfect 2003 girl music. Yeah. Um, the as soon outfits, as it came on, I was like, oh my God. Yeah, the yes. outfits are perfect. Like with the flippy hair, with the super thin highlights and the like rectangle glasses that reflect that like insane light that's mm -hmm. not a ring light. And like the perfect early 2000s makeup with the like brown shiny lips and yes. the like dewy frosty dewy, frosty like, eyeshadow yes. and dewy dewy cheeks one shoulder crocheted yes. halter to like Chonky i had belt, the be i had every outfit yeah. in this music video <laughs> like and yeah this song is so like it has like that kind of 90s like Lilith Fair vibe, but also mm -hmm. like a little bit of like Michelle Mandy Branch. Moore and like, like candy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's just like girl music. And I was very <laughs> excited to see it on this list. I was like, yeah, I love this. <laughs> Next up on March 18th, we have a comeback from Kaleo. The album was called Project Fairy Tale, and the single is called Fairy Tale. <laughs> So Cleo is a three-member girl group, and this was their fourth album. It sold 24,000 copies and was number 14 for the month of March. And the music video features them walking through, like, cartoon backgrounds mm. in the most 2003 <laughs> jeans. And 2003 me would have absolutely died over their ridiculous silk ruffle stage outfits. Like, they are wearing 
these pure, like shiny silk, like outfits that are like a little one shoulder halter top and an asymmetrical mermaid mm, skirt and yep. absolutely everything has a ruffled, ruffled. edge. And yes. like, I was like, yes, I would have worn this to the dance <laughs> at school. Like so 100%. Oh my God. The one shoulder <laughs> dresses and one shoulder tops. A classic look. Classic Luke. Yeah. The strings in the song are so beautiful. Mm. It just really is, is very lovely. So in April, we had another piece of breaking news. And this time we have some SM drama with Shinwa. Shinwa's contracts ended when 2003 began, but SM tried to keep everyone around except for Dongwan. They did not want him for whatever reason. Yeah. <laughs> and they tried to move to a company called Good Entertainment. Like the members of Shinwa tried to move to a new company, but Lee Suman said that they couldn't have the name Shinwa. So a court battle ensued that went on until 2015 yeah which is insane <laughs> like what is that 12, 12 years. years oh just to see if they could get the name Shinwa. and i guess they eventually won because they have they have released now. things under Shinwa yeah. after 2015 so i guess they won in the end but wow what a long legal battle yeah and it like started in April because I was noticing that even though their contracts had ended, like on the first of the year, they had released an album at the end of November of 2002. So they were still doing like music, music shows and stuff. Mm. So I think this like really kicked off once they were like truly done, done promoting. Yeah. Next up on April 3rd, we had a comeback from Baby Vox. The album is called Devotion and the single is What Should I Do? This album was number three for April and 30 to 32 for the whole year with 84,000 copies sold. And you can hear much more about this in the Baby Vox Deep Dive, which is episode 214 of Great. this show. <laughs> Love it. On April 4th, we had a comeback from soloist Lee Jae-jin. The album was called OO2J2 and the single was called Go Back. <laughs> This is the second solo album from the Sex Skis member, um, and it is pretty much a direct ripoff of the En Vogue song Express Yourself. Like, as soon as I heard it and the choreo kicked in with that, like, ba -na -na, I started singing, like, and the rest will follow. <laughs> and I was like, what is that song? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the music video was hilarious because he's just like, has really cheesy energy. Like, yes. I don't know, like his, maybe it's just like his red floppy hair. Like, yeah, he has like he ginger has, hair that's in like a flippy it's super shag. Flippy. It's like the haircut I had in 2002 <laughs> because I wanted to look like Rachel Lee Cook. Yeah, like, from Josie and the Pussycats. Yes, Cats. it's like totally. a very girly haircut and it's this very like orangey ginger like hydrogen color peroxide like, color of orange. And like, there are parts where he's wearing Heelys and dancing. Of course. Um, and it's just very goofy. There's also, I put a stage in the playlist where right as the song starts, a dancer like kicks his microphone <laughs> out of his hands and like three stooges, he like whoop, 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 like fumbles it in such a crazy way and has to try to recover. It's very funny. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, all right. On April 15th, we had an interesting scandal. So Eugene from SES got mixed up in what was called the X-Files scandal. Mm. There was an actor named Park Yong-ha, and him and Eugene had been in a drama called Loving You in 2002, where they were like the romantic leads, and they had to deny dating rumors when the show was on because mm. everyone was like, hmm, I don't know. But then somebody hacked the actor's email oh, no. and like revealed a bunch of his personal pictures, including one where Eugene was sitting on his lap, dun, dun, dun. which they kind of couldn't get around because even if they weren't dating, that's like not ladylike behavior or something. So her company reportedly told her to break up with him or pay them $50,000 <gasps> for the reputation damage. Oh! She was supposed to debut as a soloist in April, 
but went home to Guam instead. And the company said it was a planned vacation and had nothing to do with the scandal. Fucking liars. Right? Wow. Break up with him or pay us $50,000 for reputation damage. That's insane. Right? Because A, it's not your reputation that got damaged. And B, like... Uh, well, I guess I was going to say, like, don't tell me who to date, but they can. <laughs> yeah. But they can but and they, they kind of do. But wow. wild. But I thought that was interesting because it did not come up in the recent SES deep dive because yeah. this is post SES. So. True, 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 true. <gasps> Bummer, though. Yeah. Yikes. The very next day on April 16th, we had a debut of a group called Take. The album was called One Story and the single was titled Baby Baby. <laughs> Take was a five-member boy group under Blue Entertainment, and at some point they became two members but released music together until 2019, so they did stick around for a while. This album was number 91 for the year with 31,000 copies sold, and articles at the time called them the new HOT because teens seemed to really like them. Yes, it was apparently like a big deal that like they were teens and that teens mm. were into them because like it had been a while since yeah. like a new boy group had hit with anyone mm. or something caught on but i loved their little wallet chains <laughs> and one of the members in all the stages had like a million little clippies at the front of his hair yeah, so yeah, that the yeah. rest of it like spoofed back out. up and i just i thought i agreed with the articles and i think these boys should have been huge I like, kind of agree. The song is good. They're very good. Like, I, they had the right vibe. Yes. I was surprised that they didn't. And they had only five. And they had, like, good dancing that wasn't, like, super crazy. But it wasn't, like, really, really simple. So it, like, felt like a boy band, you know. And they even have, like, one of the members without a shirt on in the music video. And I was like, what? Why one hit one? Yeah. Baby, baby. Yeah. They also have an incredible Sugar Man stage where they all are still mm. hot and very good at singing. So. Good for them. Good for them. On April 16th, we have a disbandment. The group Brown Eyes, which was just a, a vocal duo, they announced that they would be splitting because member Yoon Gun wanted to go solo. And then the other member, Now, would start a new group mm. later in the year. Stay tuned. Oh, I love it. On April 29th, we had a comeback from a group called Actong Club, not Akmu. <laughs> <laughs> the album was called Actong Club Volume 2, and the single was titled Illusion. <laughs> We do apologize that the sound effects in that music video are incredibly loud. <laughs> yes. um, but this was a four member boy group that debuted in 2002. The album was number 80 for the year with 39,000 copies sold. Um, and the music video is just like them in, I don't know, there's like a very badly like CGI, like rocket car rocket thing motorcycle that like, car thing and they're driving yeah, they're like up the driving side of buildings around and like but it seems to be like a vr or something like the the guy who seems to be driving it is like in a room behind computers it doesn't seem like he's in the right. vehicle it's it seems like he's controlling <laughs> it yeah 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 but as you were saying when we were watching it, like the song is very dorky. Yeah, and it's the just music like video, such a cheesy yeah, children's little, show like, vibes. Do, 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 yeah, like what is that? Like it's like a little xylophone or something. I don't know. It's just it has very very cheesy energy as well. <laughs> All right, moving into May. On May 1st, we had a comeback from soloist Cha Taehyun with his album Cha Taehyun, second album. <laughs> and the single is called Again to Me. <laughs> So Cha Taehyun is a soloist from Sidious HQ, but he's now better known as like an actor and a TV personality because mm -hmm. he's one of the fixed cast members of Two Days, One Night for like very many years, which is what I feel like I know him yeah. best from. Um, and his performance in 2010's Hello Ghost got him dubbed Korea's Jim Carrey. Yeah, I thought that was a fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this album was number 42 for the year with 73,000 copies sold, and he got one trophy on Music Camp and 
and the song is just so very fun. Oh, I love it. I think this song is so, so fun. And for some reason, I recognized it. I don't know why if I've like seen someone do like a karaoke cover of it or something mm. like that, but it's a fucking bop. I love this song. <laughs> it's so, so catchy and fun. All right. Next up, May 15th, we had a very important comeback from <laughs> The Jadu. The album was called Jadu Third Album, and the single was called Kimbap. So this is a co-ed duo that was named in the year 2000 as one of Korea's most celebrated indie bands. It was number 54 for the year with 54,000 copies sold. Fun little coincidence mm-hmm. there. Um, but this is the song I was talking about at the beginning of the episode where I was saying like one of the songs is still like a classic mm-hmm. and very popular. And it's this one because this was a song I knew before. I've heard it many, many times. Really? Yes. I don't know why, but I like the Jadu matters. Like. Like, I mean, I put it on the important. list because every single one of these 20 year back episodes, we have included a Jadu yeah, song. Yeah, yeah. I don't care that it's not K-pop. It's, it's K-pop adjacent. <laughs> it's very K-pop adjacent and it's fucking adorable. And it's a co-ed duo. So it's just like a girl and a guy and the guy does sing. We didn't play a clip of him singing, but he does sing. Um, but I love the girl's voice. It's like so cartoonish and mm-hmm. wonderful. And that harmonica solo is the guy really playing the harmonica <laughs> live on all the stages. And it's excellent. Yeah. I love the Jadu. I love a harmonica love solo. <laughs> and Jadu means plum, by the way, yes, if you want a Korean lesson. All right, May 22nd, we have a comeback from Coyote, and the album was called Coyote Fifth Album. See, I told you. And the single (laughs) is Emergency. So Coyote, we have talked about many, many times. This was a co-ed group that debuted in 1998. But the thing about Coyote is that it's been the same one girl Mm -hmm. always. Yeah. But she always had two different guys behind her. And like they would go to the military or quit and she'd just get two new ones. (laughs) So there's been a lot of dudes in Coyote, but the same girl the whole time, which Mm. I just think is so boss of her. Yeah. Like this is my group. This is my group. And I have a rotate like a revolving door of dudes. But this was their first comeback since their member Kim Gu had been arrested for drug use, which we talked about in the 2002 Mm -hmm. episode when it happened. This was the number seven album for the year with 239,000 copies sold. And the music video features the members. They have a couch, Mm -hmm. but they're like in different nature settings, like the forest and a waterfall and the desert and the beach. And they're just like carrying the couch around and then they sit it down and they sing dramatically on it and then they take it somewhere else. Yeah. Then that's the whole thing. And yeah, the mcha mchas are really popping off in this one. (laughs) Yes, they are. But it is still a pretty catchy song. For sure. (laughs) On May 28th, we had a debut of a group called Funny. The album was also called Funny, but the single was titled Confession. This was a co-ed group, four members, two boys, two girls, and this is the only album they ever made. Um, but there's a very fun, like, summer concept to the video and the stages. Um, and there's some pretty terrible singing uh, from the girls in those stages. It's <laughs> shock. It's honestly shocking because at this point in the episode, like, going through these, I was like, hey... I think everybody's starting to get better at they're, singing. Yeah, they're not because so bad. Because the stages were less unpleasant than they had been in previous years. And then this one, like, knocked me off my feet <laughs> because, like, woof. It's woof. a little rough. It's a little rough. But I learned from the comments of these videos, because there were a bunch of comments about, like, oh, my God, Hannah looks so young. And I was like, hmm. So I looked it up. One of the girls is an actress named Park Hana who's, uh, like, still doing stuff. So well, that's, like, her. a fun fact. She started out in this little group. Nice. Funny. Another name that's very hard to search yeah. for. 
In- funny K-pop? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Imagine me trying to Google funny K-pop. Like, are you kidding me? It was, I had to like go into the Hangul and be like, pony. Pony? <laughs> Does that help? It didn't. It didn't really. <laughs> Next up on May 30th, we have a comeback from Queen Boa with her album Atlantis Princess and the single of the same name. This album was number five for the year with 345,000 copies sold and six music show trophies for Boa. And you can hear much more about this in the Boa Deep Dive. Yes, it's two parts. That same day, May 30th, we got a debut from Eugene. Uh, the album was called My True Style and the single was titled The Best. You are the best thing in my life. So this was her solo debut from SES uh, under FNJ Entertainment. So I guess after she took some time in Guam, she was they in did fact able finally finish to the debut. Comeback. Yeah, uh, this album was number fifty-five for the year with fifty-four thousand copies sold, um, and the music video is just her looking very like angelic in a nice vacation spot, and she like writes a nice letter and like folds it into a paper airplane and sends it into the the sky like whatever she's just being beautiful um but yeah but then it ends with a very weird barefoot cinderella moment there's like at the very end of the video a man that we never see like they don't show him like kneels in front of her and there's like a very long shot of her barefoot and then he picks it up and like puts a shoe oh. on it and like i totally that. forgot so about guess, that already you know she gets that she finds the prince or whatever at the end but i was like look at this long barefoot moment like <laughs> who directed this <laughs> quentin tarantino <laughs> that's what i always say <laughs> whenever i see bare feet on screen i'm like what is this tarantino <laughs> There's also maybe in, that was the exchange. Like instead of paying fifty thousand dollars, you have to just show give your us feet a in long this music foot shot. Video. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope that's not. I the hope case. that wasn't it. But <laughs> the stage that I put in the playlist, she is wearing this absolutely hideous dress <laughs> that's like a one shoulder dress, like we were talking about. But the whole thing is absolutely covered in ruffles and like weird like brooches and it's just like shockingly ugly because eugene as we discussed is a beautiful perfect angel and i was just like this dress is so (laughs) ugly i couldn't believe it it is not the best next up on june 5th we have a comeback from soloist lim chang jong uh the album was called bye and the single is called a glass of soju so this guy we talked about in the last two Mm -hmm. years of episodes because he is the quote original multi-entertainer ballad singer he always stars in his long movie Mm -hmm. music videos and like is like funny and charming and like yeah quite the actor quite the actor um i did not even try to watch this whole music video make sense of it it. because it was seven seven minutes minutes long long. (laughs) but he's kind of playing a gangster and trying to woo a girl who's like a ballet dancer that's probably the most plot you can get out of it that sounds that sounds right uh but this album was number 20 for the year at 126,000 copies sold and I thought the reason I put it in there and I thought it was funny is because this album was called by because he was retiring from music hilarious but he did make another album in 2009 and has released nine more since then <laughs> so by for now by for now <laughs> is what it should have been called on June 12th we had a debut of a group called Nell The album was called Let It Rain, and the single was titled Stay. (laughs) 
Nell was a four-member alt-rock band that was named after the Jodie Foster movie, <laughs> Nell. Okay. Um, and their group is, quote, known for their gloomy and psychedelic sound. Yeah, I wrote this one down not knowing it was going to end up being like indie mm-hmm. rock mm-hmm. just because the name felt so familiar to me. It felt familiar to me, too, and I'm not entirely sure why. Yeah, yeah I, I'm not sure. Like, have they remained relevant? Did they do an OST song? I know once did we see them at the Hollywood Bowl and like I don't know but the name just felt so familiar to me yeah I'm not sure or maybe they've come up in one of our other like dives into the time machine or something who knows but anyway, this was their official debut album under a Sotai G subsidiary, but they had previously released two albums independently. Okay. So this is technically their third album as a group. It was number 75 for the year with 43,000 copies sold. Next up on the same day, we have a debut of a solo artist named Uni, which is was stylized capital U semicolon N-E-E. The album was called Unicode, and the single is Go. So, Yuni was a solo artist who debuted under Sinara Music. Her birth name is Lee Hye Ryeon, and she had been a teen actress. Mm. And it's act- this is actually like a very tragic K pop story, actually. Mm. Um, so she was like a teen actress and she was mostly in like after school special type movies where she oh, played nice. like sluts and bullies and stuff. Oh dear. And she was in the sex Keys movie 17. Okay. She was one of the girls in that. So this solo debut was like supposed to be her trying to win over the public because I don't know, we've talked about this before with like actors, like when people play like villains and mm, stuff, they get that reputation. They get that reputation. Yeah. Um, so anyway, this was her debut or whatever. Uh, she unfortunately passed away a few years after this. She just had a very bad life and it's a very like tragic story, but this music video for her debut single has her like in a huge bird cage in like a gown and there's so much wind machine going. Yeah. Her gown is essentially like shredded fabric. So it's just like, like streamers like blowing all around. And she has so much eyeliner on like (laughs) the most eyeliner. (laughs) And it almost looks like it was so thick that like when she opened her eyes it smudged on the top of her eyelid like because that's how like messy it is it's very wild it's very wild but i i will say i mean i like hesitate to say this knowing that her life was hard but she's not very good yeah yeah, yeah. so beware if you watch the stage for Um, sure it's a little rough it's one of the pitchy ones yeah 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 that happens Next up, on June 16th, we had a comeback from a group called Sugar. The album was titled Shine, and the single was also titled Shine. Shine was a five-member girl group under Star World. Three of the members seem to still be famous. Huang jung um was in Kill Me and Heal Me. It's I, the same title, Kill Me, Heal oh, Me. Oh, Kill Me, was Heal Me. I see, I see. Park Soo Jin was a host for a show called Tasty Road. And Lee Ayumi is a Japanese actress. Um, so they mm, split but went on to but other st- things. kept a few doing of stuff, them. yeah. Yes. And one of the girls, I'm guessing it's Lee Ayumi in the music video. She has the biggest eyes I've ever <laughs> seen. Like a straight up anime cartoon it's insane and like because her (laughs) eyes are brown like her it it just looks like enormous pupils like when my cat like (laughs) opens her eyes all the way and i'm just like oh my god look at these like starry eyes it's wild um she looks like a little doll but this album was 84 for the year with thirty seven thousand copies sold and the song has a very like public domain it has that public domain like nursery rhyme yeah it feels very child friendly like and the music video is really colorful and it like feels like something off the disney channel yeah. and they have like you know bubblegum pink clothes and like with like a million little, laces like, on it like colors. all their clothes like yeah. the jeans have like laces up the side like mm-hmm. their uh shoes and they have like arm Ribbons, warmers like, tied all around little their hats things. yeah yeah and yeah a like, lot of lot of laces yeah i kind of loved this and a like it it was the only thing like this on this whole list i was like all that right here's like this kind of k-pop we yeah, got yeah, it yeah. 
It's true though. It is, it is an outlier a little bit. And then the last thing for this chunk of the year is obviously the SM Town, SM Town Summer 03 album. And the SM Town single was called Hello Summer. This album was number number 65 for the year with 46,000 copies sold. And we dedicated an entire episode to these SM Town Summer albums. And there's also a Patreon episode of us watching all of the music videos. Yeah. If that is interesting to you. But that gets us to our halfway point Yay, of 2003. We did it. We did it. Um, just to go over while we wrap up, I have a little list of trends Love that it. I noticed like fashion trends. So we have the jeans that have the huge stripes slash groove slash highlights mm-hmm. of like bleach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was very much a thing at the time. And sometimes they would even like dye the bleach part. Like, oh, it's yeah. red. Like totally the parts like that a are... different color. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom would never let me buy those jeans. <laughs> <laughs> they are very silly. They are. It's also, probably for the best. Yeah. <laughs> so many visors. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Lots of visors. Yeah. And those like clear sunglasses. So much clear yeah, sunglasses. Yeah, yeah. That are, like, I, little rectangles. In said Patreon SM Town Summer episode, I posted some pictures of me in 2003 with my clear sunglasses nice. because they were very much a thing. Um, there was a lot of like really shiny, silky material yeah, in that, stage like, outfits. Fake sateen Yes, almost. where it like yeah. really shines. And like I said, ruffles, like just lots of ruffles on the edges of things, mm-hmm. like whole shirts made of yeah. ruffles. And one shoulder, like crop tops and mm-hmm. dresses and things like that. Low rise bell bottoms, of course. Duh. It's 2003. Really frosty glittery eye makeup Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and then a lot of the boys had like fluffy shaggy haircuts yeah which all the boys in my high school also had shaggy haircuts in 2003 yeah just like poofy yes um but it was not as like styled or structured as we saw in like first gen um like or like the beginnings of first gen because i guess we're kind of still in in in, we're kind of on the cusp right now it's about to it's about yeah the second gen is about to to really kick off because we're Boa is here now and she's really the beginning of the second wave but uh yeah like it's it's because like when we had like hot like you had like fucking sculptures on right. their heads and now you're just getting sort of like messy like rolled out of bed with some fluff like, i think that's kind of why i felt the most like nostalgically connected to this one because people had haircuts that me and my friends had mm-hmm. and were, were mm-hmm. and are wearing mall clothes that we wore and there's yeah. less of the like costumey costumes True. and the super sculptured wacky hair like everyone kind of looked more like normal cool teens yeah 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 and that really wasn't the vibe of like the beginning of K-pop. No. Like HOT was like larger than life. We're and, weird like, caricature guys. Yeah, in yeah, our yeah. Crazy totally. outfits and our tunics and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> like we are not go- boys that you would go to that school wear jeans with. and chain yeah, yeah, wallets. Yeah. I just called them goys. <laughs> <laughs> they are goys. They I are suppose. those. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that was very fun as always. Tune in later in the year while we come back with the rest of 2003. Yes. And there are some things on this l- 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 on the second half of 2003 that to me are forever classics. So mm. I think we'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll be getting somewhere we'll in the second half of the year. Love it. And we'll be right back with a random game. All right, we are back, and the random number generator is being as freaky as possible this week, <laughs> and it literally picked as one that duo that made the good girl music that we were so excited about. Fantastic! Yes, it's so funny because not only did they choose like a group that fit into this episode, but also their very last release that announced their hiatus from the music industry in 2017 was titled 
goodbye for now, which is a joke <laughs> I just made. I know. I love that. Random number generator. You always have our backs. Always. So as one was a pretty prolific duo for their time. They were together from 1999 and they are technically still together. Um, like at least it says present. I mean, but they their released last... a song with a guy from AB6 in 2019. Yeah, that's their last release, 2019. But they released uh, four EPs and I think I counted, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven studio albums between 1999 and 2016 um and they have i didn't i'm not even going to count them because there's so many but there's so many singles non-album singles osts and a ton of collaborations because these girls were vocalists and kind of known as like an r&b duo so they're featured on a lot of different things as well and they have so many osts as well so quite a long discography for these ladies yes um so we are going to watch the music video for their debut song because it was noted as a hit so let's check it out the korean title or the translated title is only you wouldn't know Mm -hmm. so if you want to look up as one only you wouldn't know there's a couple of uploads they're not all the best but uh we're gonna try to watch this together yes (laughs) it's uh easier to find it if you use the hangul title just f (laughs) <laughs> uh, so let's check this out as one so you wouldn't know press only you only wouldn't you know. wouldn't know <laughs> only you all right press play when i say go three two one go all right as a card oh so grainy so gritty Uh oh Oh, okay it's a car probably a car accident yep yep Mm -hmm. someone is passed out on the steering wheel oh okay so we have like some tv monitors and like a couple snuggling in a white room that's like all covered in sheets or it's like the whole floor is like a bit oh an imac (laughs) yeah an (laughs) imac and like tons of like screens around them Who's this guy? He almost looks like a member of the group. This microphone has a ring light around it. (laughs) I don't think I've ever seen that before. This one has a long curtain bang. Their names were Min and Crystal. Yes. Just by the way. (laughs) And it appears that the... Oh, kissing. I was going to say, it appears that the other member is standing behind her. It doesn't look like a mirror, but maybe it is a mirror. No, I think they're back It's her, right? Yeah. And we're getting some, like, saucy, like, naked backs and some hands. And, like, stroking of skin that's, like, disembodied. Ooh. Like, what are those? Legs? Yep. Yep. (laughs) Tangled legs. Okay, but that seems to be a different girl. Yeah. But neither of these girls seem to be the members of the group. No. I can't tell if it's the same guy, though. Oh, wow. I didn't even realize that we've been switching back and forth between the two main singers. (laughs) Yeah, they're like flipping around. Yeah, their hair is the exact same color, but one of them has a side bang and one of them is a middle part. And that's the only difference. And they're literally just standing behind each other and they like turn and change places. Look at that. Yeah, they're on a turntable. That's so funny. So funny. Smoking. Ooh, could never. This whole music video is quite scandalous. It really is. Especially for a debut. For a debut. Look at shirtless. A man, but still. He's shirtless and on top of a woman. Yes. Oh, slap him. <gasps> Ooh. Has he been two-timing you with this lady in the white room? I think so. They only showed it for a quick second. I hope they show it again. But there was like one shot of the girls wearing leather jackets and standing in front of a city that's going by too fast. Like Mm. in that Spice Girls music video. I love that. There There it is. It's just for like a second. (laughs) 
turntable is hilarious. <laughs> like, no, we can't have you in the same shot at once. One at a time only. Yep. Please take turns. We actually only have one microphone, so you ladies are going to have to share. <laughs> oh, now this woman is like getting drunk at a club, staring at fire. Oh, oh she's falling asleep at the club. That's You're in the club? Good. What? Who is this guy? Oh, what on earth? What is happening? What? Okay, suddenly there are <laughs> okay. like men with long hair and masks and gloves, like doing like freaky dancing in a like acid background. What is this? What? Why does that guy look like Chris Angel? Like, what is happening right now? This Ooh, is very like unexpected. Like oh no, she's gonna drive home drunk and, and crash. die. Oh damn it! All because you two timed her, you little slut. Fade out. Wow. Wow. Oh, and bloody the blood head. dripping down. Oh, no. Wow. Honestly, a classic first gen music Absolutely. video. Absolutely. <laughs> so. This is so 1999. <laughs> it really is. And wow. it's called Joy Pictures. <laughs> Great. So yeah, joyful. So joyful. So joyful. Oh, my God. Fantastic. Wow. wow. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Well, that was as one. I love it. I want to, I feel like I need to dig into their discography. I know it's they been have groovy and fun. They have I a like good it. sound. Mm -hmm. I like it. All right. It is weekly recommendation time. I have nothing. And I have, I don't I'm think I have anything lie. either because I haven't watched. Oh my God. No, nothing. I do. I do. I do. Oh, you do? Wait. Good. Yes. Hold on. Because EXO. Oh, right. All eight <laughs> members of EXO are out and about and doing shenanigans and so there is a very very funny mini series on the exo uh youtube channel the title is totally in korean so i'm not entirely sure like what the title is but hold on let me find it oh my god it like sent me th down such an exo <laughs> rabbit hole it was so funny okay so i don't know what this title is do you it's really long. Hope she, perhaps, this trainee. Well, something about like, will this trainee debut or something? Yeah. yeah. So the concept of it is that it's for Kai Rover. So the concept of it is that Kai is a trainee who is going up to the seven EXO members to prove himself and see whether or not they'll approve his debut. Mm -hmm. And it's in like a practice room at SM and they put up the cloud background, <laughs> which is so funny. I love that. And so like there's two parts to it. And the first part is like they're all sitting at a table and they make him do like dance challenges and like introduce himself as a, as a trainee. And it's very funny. And then <laughs> the second part is like a photo shoot or something. They like just get increasingly more ridiculous and they start making like the other members do silly things as well it's very very fun it's classic exo foolishness and it made me so so happy i can't even <laughs> tell you i like can't even tell you the joy it brought to me to like watch silly exo things and i like went back into the exo channel and pulled up like the christmas thing that they did with like seven of them <laughs> right. and then i went like further back and started finding like exo ladders and i was like oh no exo <laughs> <laughs> i the other day i turned on my i've talked about this before but on my Samsung TV, there are like three weird channels mm -hmm. that just like play K-pop stuff. And on the CJ e &M channel, they were playing EXO Ladder episodes, <gasps> which was a purchase only show. So I never wow. saw it and I like needed to do chores. But I told myself, this is an opportunity that does not come. Absolutely. So I need to sit here and finish this episode <laughs> and then I'll do my chores. So that's what I did. Nice. Good But job. it was very nice to spend some time with EXO. It had been so long. I know. Yeah. They've apparently this week, they've been in Jeju filming something. Ooh, it's all happening. It's, it's all happening. happening. It's happening. I can't believe it. Um, I feel like my episode specific, uh, recommendation would be to go watch the sugar man stages for like take mm, and five. Yeah. And there's a Jadu one. That's good. Like these sugar man stages are really nice mm -hmm. and they're like, I don't know. They're just like endearing. And I love that people 
persevere and that they can like pull these people out of their office jobs yeah. and be like, want to sing one more time? Like, and they're I like, yeah, <laughs> let's do it. That was fun. And it's really great. So those are great. But like in a modern, you know, newish K-pop, it would have been better last week if, if we'd put an episode out. But the boy, the newish boy group trends with a Z, oh, yeah. they have a new song out called new days with a Z. <laughs> and I really like it. Yeah. It's just like very, it's just like my style of song. And like, I feel like the choreo is cool and mm -hmm. they have a good little attitude and I just yeah. really like it. So yeah. And they've, we talked about them in our villain battle episode. Cause they had a, a song for called villain. Um, cause I like, when you sent that to me, I was like, why do I know this group? Like this sounds very familiar. And then I looked and like their, I was like, oh, I've seen their villain music video. Like right. that's why. Um, but I watched a couple of other like music videos of theirs and they're fun i like them yeah so there's my you know up to date ish k-pop recommendation but nice. also i think you should watch all of these old school all yeah, of these totally. sweet grown ass dads and stuff reliving their boy band days on sugar man because it's cute to me or the sweet grown ass dad that's still living his boy band days in exo exactly because <laughs> those are from just three days ago true very recent look at me up on my shit love it good job good job <laughs> Uh, all right, that is it for this week. If you would like to get in contact with us, we can be found at AMA K Pop Pod on Twitter and Instagram, AMA K Pop Pod at gmail.com for emails 181 AMA K Pop 5 if you'd like to leave us a voicemail or send us a text message. P.O. Box 26096, Los Angeles, California, 90026 for regular old mail. You can go to askmeaboutkpop.com right now and get some Ask Me About K-Pop merch. You can go to patreon.com slash pod and join our Patreon to get special bonus uh, video and audio content. Head over to our YouTube channel right now because we've got a new series of K-Pop The Cork airing. Yes, our bias episodes. Biases. They're very, very fun. A lot of people have been, we've been hearing that y'all are enjoying them because our bias episodes of the regular podcast are, have always been like popular episodes. Yeah. I feel like people just like get the warm fuzzies from listening yeah, to people hearing, talk about why mm -hmm, they love totally, their biases. Totally. And this series really is like just a follow up or continuation of those audio episodes where we're like, we talked about your, our biases and then you sent us letters about yours and we just read them. And that's literally what this is. Like we gave you prompts and we're reading them. <laughs> so right now but getting kind of drunk while we do it. Exactly. <laughs> so right now we've got favorite thing and least favorite thing episodes up coming later this week will be what's your ideal like date yeah. with if your you had an afternoon. What would you do with them? Yes. That was that the one prompt. has some pretty wild moments in it that mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to you seeing. And I then said, take it however you want it. And then <laughs> And then uh, to finish it off, the fourth episode, we had pictures of your biases that you sent us and we played a quick game of Smasher Pass. And that episode will only be on Patreon. So you're going to have to join Patreon if you want to see that. We can't have those opinions in the public. No. Way. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. I mean, God, what if we like met one of them at some point and that was just like out, and out about. there oh, no i would die if they want to pay me three dollars for it though then that's like, fine. fine they, they can watch it. it i already got your money <laughs> <laughs> but anyway um that's it thank you so much for listening um and we will see you next week goodbye bye bye Jonghyun, you're our inspiration 